Welcome to another episode of Plastic Surgery Uncensored. I'm your host, Dr. Roddy Raban, and we do we have a show for you. We're going to be discussing the impact and, of course, the negative impact of social media, not only on society as a whole, but more specifically on teens. And why teens? Because they have access to social media more than the regular folks. And in my opinion, their sense of self and the way they're developing is a bit more fragile and more influenceable than say someone older. It's not to suggest that they're the only ones, but I think that they are perhaps the worstly affected by the impacts of social media. And by social media, I'm referring to TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, and all that comes with it in terms of filters and all that shit that is existing. So I have six beautiful nieces and nephews and uh, we did have a session actually uh, about my three nieces whose noses I did. And here I have, I've asked my um, youngest of my nieces and nephews, Tiana Niku to join me. Hi Tiana. Hi. Um, Because I think she is the best individual to discuss what it's like to be a teen. How old are you now? I'm 18. 18. And you just started your freshman year of college at Vandy, Vanderbilt. We are proud of you. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Um, Because you are literally a living product Mm -hmm. of being a young adult starting from 14 to now 18 in the era of not only just Instagram and Facebook, but TikTok and all this other garbage. And you are a socially aware individual. And while it definitely impacts men, it tends to impact women more. And so I am really excited to have you here because I think you will more than anyone else. Because us adults, we talk about it and it affects us, but we're not in the trenches. I mean, we're not in the parties and the this that the younger people are and so i'm super excited to have you so welcome to the show once again thank you i'm happy to be here okay so i want to dive in here and we're going to do um we're going to start writing and discussing rather uh the list of impacts that social media has and we started out with the first one And the first one you said, which is the most powerful one, in my opinion, is the issue of comparison. What does social media do to an individual? Again, we're going to assume this for the time being teens, but obviously it applies to everybody. So you're a young girl. You were either in your senior year, junior of high school, now in college. And so how does this comparison thing work? So... Honestly, I think the entire basis of social media that like pushes people to be so prominent on social media is comparison, whether that's with body image, like you want to look like someone else on social media, whether you want your life to seem as fun and interesting as someone else on social media. Basically, you're constantly seeing people's posts around you and you're yearning for what they have or they're yearning for what you have. And it's kind of just this toxic cycle of I want to make my life just like theirs or I want to look just like them. And it just filters into this negative system. Like, for example, I have so many friends who just like will take a video of them at like a party or a social gathering and like take a video or a picture and like they'll show me and be like, does this look fun? Like, do you think people will think this looks fun? Like, you don't post- Slow down. Hold on, hold on. You're you're going through it way too fast because for you, it's just like every day. But these (laughs) are all, these are all really important. So the idea of comparison means that you as an individual, you have your life. Good, bad, everything about it, it's yours. And then, whereas in the past, the idea of comparing yourself to someone else is not a new thing. It's not Mm. like a 2020 thing. It's a, it's human nature Mm. to look to your right and look to your left and be like, holy shit, these people are really tall. God, I'm short. You're short relative to the tall people next to you. There's no such thing as tall or short. It's all what I look relative. Mm. Wow. She's really pretty, the girl next to you at the table. But now it's at a whole new dimension because now you're seeing people that are not next to you. You're seeing everyone in the world. And then to boot, you have falsifying filters, which don't even, they don't even fucking look the way they look. So comparison is the first thing. Then what she said was, 
this idea that young people are, okay, so I'm comparing myself, look at how good Julie's life looks. And so that drives the need to look like you too are having fun, yeah. having a good time, your yeah. life, you're a baller, things are great. Mm -hmm. And so then, as you mentioned, people will take images and I want people to understand that this is all curated. Mm -hmm. You know, it's designed to look like it's just happening, but you said it perfect. And there are many people who are comment, it's curated. You take a video, you look at the video and you said, you said your friends will ask, does this look fun? As if to suggest that, you know, <clears throat> if it doesn't, let's delete it and do it again. So it's, yeah. it's not reality. It's curated and it's acting. Completely. So then you had mentioned another thing to me, which is as a result of that whole, look who, what she's doing. What am I doing? Shit, I got to post. I haven't posted. Is the idea of FOMO. Mm -hmm. For those of you who don't know, it's fear of missing out. Oh my God, there's six events tonight. I got well, so-and-so posted. Oh my God, she was at the concert. So what does FOMO feel like as a teen? FOMO. What does it mean to you? Yeah, FOMO is extremely prominent, particularly in my life, I feel like. And it's manifested through social media because like through these platforms, you before, like you said, before it was just like, oh, my friend is going and I'd hear through my friend. Now I can see my entire college campus at a party. These people that I don't even know are like, I don't relate to them at all. I see them there. And it's just like, you feel like you are missing out. And like at the snap of a finger, those people are going to be best friends. Those people are going to start dating. Those people are going to do this, that. And you feel like you are completely like, in a life altering situation, if you don't go to X party, like social media and FOMO specifically manifested through social media just makes you feel like you're never doing enough to be included the most that you could. Right. Like so the idea is, and we're going to go through it is the comparisons and the FOMOs and all these other things then trickle down mm -hmm. into affecting one's sense of psyche and self and so the issue of itself isn't, oh, I'm comparing myself. The issue isn't that I have a fear of missing out. The issue is as a result of comparing myself, as a result of fear of missing out, I am depressed. Yeah. I am anxious. I am sad. I am insecure. We're going to get to that whole section of it because that's the only thing that matters, mm -hmm. right? The impact of all this shit is that now as a person, I feel depressed, anxious, insecure, blah, blah, blah. So here you are, you're trying to just be a young adult as it is, as it is. Being a young adult is just difficult. Mm -hmm. School, classmates, acne, developing breasts, hormones. You know, there's people that are just genetically lucky and they look good at this time. And those that don't, some are athletic, some are rich. Those are just standard. They always existed in teens. That's why teens have a hard time. Then you dump Red Bull or lighter fluid on this situation mm -hmm. and that is social media and when you add that in there it toxifies the situation at a level that is just unprecedented yeah then as a result of the fomo and the comparison you as you had mentioned have a constant urge a constant urge to pump out your own content so that you too will look equally happy, fulfilled, cool, relevant than the people whose photos, videos you've watched that look like they're having a great time. So you have to keep up with the Joneses. Yeah. So what does that mean? That means that you are not, you are constantly looking to take images and videos, right? Yeah. I've seen you at parties. I've seen, and everyone is with their, that, you know, we say about being present and you'll be old enough one day and you'll understand what that exactly means. Yeah. It's kind of very existential. A present is I'm here right now. I'm not thinking about tomorrow. I didn't think about mm -hmm. yesterday, but I'm here. When you're constantly worrying about what image you're putting out or what video you're, hey, 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 guys, get here, get here. No, 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 lighting's not good. Let's go over here. Mm -hmm. You're not present. So <clears throat> how much does this... <clears throat> process of generating content take up of your time? 
an embarrassingly, embarrassingly significant amount. Like, I hate to admit it, but I'm not going to sit here and be like, no, no, it doesn't. Like, it is the basis to social gatherings, to everything that I do, whether it's me who's trying to do something or someone else, anyone that's trying to generate content, take photos, take videos, pictures, and stuff like that. They're not doing it because they want to, in a sense. Like, they're not doing it because like, oh, I want to capture this moment and remember it. It's because, oh, this is a perfect moment for me to display how great my life is. This is a perfect moment where I look good and like I should show everyone that I look good. And so it's like everywhere I go, I just feel like you can see people with their phones the entire time. Like when something fun is happening, people aren't enjoying, like you said, people aren't present. People aren't enjoying the moment that they're in when it's magnificent and amazing. People are like, time for me to capture this so everyone else can see how magnificent and amazing it is. So, so it sounds like a shit ton of pressure. It oh sounds like I'm always, I always have to be on always. and catch the moment because God forbid I didn't catch the moment as people say, then it didn't happen. Always. So you're always going to places with the mindset. All right. All right, guys, here we go. Let's, let's make sure to get this all recorded. And it's like a huge ass production. And yeah. what, what fun is that? It's not. No, but all genuinely, all genuinely, because you're a bubbly, fun person. Do you have, do you really enjoy, if you really think about it, the process of constantly curating your images, combing through them, making sure they look good, making sure you look good, the angle is good, posting it, checking on your post probably every 20 minutes to see the number of responses, the comments. Do you, it's do you like it? Is it it's, fun? Is it something you're enjoying? Exhausting. But do you it's, enjoy it? I don't. I don't enjoy it. I feel it's necessary for me to do. I feel Why? Like I Wait, stop right there. Stop right there. Because this is the key crux right here. So like anyone who's listening, right? This is no different. This is no different than saying, hey, when I drink alcohol, I feel like shit. I feel the pressure to drink alcohol. Everyone is having fun with alcohol and I feel like I have to have alcohol. Yeah. So you would, if I told you that story, the answer is don't drink, you need help. Yeah. Right. But somehow this is like, no, 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 whatever. It's just what it has to be. So yeah. the question I have, which is going to sound earth shattering, mm -hmm. what happens if you don't do it? Not what do you think will happen? Not what you are afraid will happen, but what do you think will actually happen if you reduce your engagement and involvement by 50%? I think, I think it would honestly drastically change my life. No, but I, what, how? I think one, I would be less socially accepted in a sense. How? Tell me how that means. It means you'll go to a party and they'll be like, oh, Tiana only posted seven times? No. In a sense that like, for example, I'll give you the sorority example because I feel like that's the perfect way for me to depict what this means. Typically, when you're rushing a sorority in college, your social media <coughs> is one of the biggest ways they will indicate whether or not they want you in your sorority. That's just how it is. Mm -hmm. If you're not constantly updating your social media, showing what your life is like, like being engaged and involved and stuff like that, they're not going to want you. And it's really sad to say, but like social media is just how they keep up with you. Okay. Or like my friends, for example, like not necessarily my best friends because obviously I'm with them all the time, but just like people I'm becoming friends with throughout college, especially in a really new time in my life where I don't know that many people, social media and how I depict my life on social media is a way that they learn about me. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it's a kind of unfortunate, but is a way that a lot of people want to depict if you're cool or not and decide if they want to be friends with you in a sense. Right. So, but, but that's not new. Yeah. What you just described is not new. I did the same shit when I was in college. You yeah. don't think when I was in college, I wanted to be liked. Yeah. You don't think when I was in college, I wanted friends. You don't think in college when I was there, I wanted people to think I was cool. That's mm -hmm. not specific to social media or your sorority. When I was, a, when I rushed a fraternity, they want to know if you were like a likable guy. Yeah. We didn't have social media, but we still had the criteria, which is, are you likable? Are you desirable? Are you, are you worthy? But the difference is now all of those questions that you just said are 
answered through your presence on social media. So you, so what you're describing is that you're an emotional hostage because what you're telling me is that I don't have a choice. If I don't partake in the mafia of social media as a young adult, if I say, cause you're very aware, it's not like I'm mentioning this to you and you're like, huh? <laughs> I love social media. No, you're like, I hate it. It's bullshit. I have no choice. I'm at a new school. It's the way people uh, uh, judge you. And I got I have to, I got, I have no choice. So in a weird way, you sound trapped in the social media web. Yeah. And just think about that for a second. You are stuck, even though, even though you could just not do it, it's a falsified imprisonment because I'm telling you just don't. And you're saying, well, oh, I cannot. Yeah. Let's leave the sorority out of it. That's a unique scenario. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, you should be able to just be like, I'm not doing it. I'm off. And your sister, wait, your sister, Tara, is a likable girl, correct? Yeah. She's pretty happening, cool, social, friendly, outgoing. She was valedictorian. Your sister, Tara, is pretty badass. She's a venture capitalist in a man's world. She lives in Berkeley, in, in San Francisco, and is killing it. Mm -hmm. Making six figures, right? Your sister Tara is how much older than you? Seven years. Seven years. So she's not a dinosaur. <laughs> is your sister Tara on social media? Facebook. So the answer is no. Like, no. So what I just want you, because you don't need to go very far. Yeah. Right? Because people are like, oh, you don't need to be on social media. What do you know? You're not even fucking cool. <laughs> you don't even know what it's like to be cool. So... How could you tell me not to be on social media? You're under a rock. But within stone throw distance from you is your sister. And we're not going to get into details of it because you're distinctly different people and the type of friends you make are different. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is it's not impossible. And it doesn't mean that you're not cool, not smart, not. It. It's just a choice that you're making that seems that you don't have a choice. Yeah. Why I say these things, why is this whole thing relevant? Because we're going to take a break and come back. It's because of the ramifications of the social media entrapment, which is what? Anxiety, depression, eating disorders, sexual, hypersexuality, premature operations and surgeries. That is the reason why this is catastrophic. Not because you as a young girl have some FOMO and you're at a party and you want people to be like, well, shit, Tiana, she looks hot. She looks cool. She's having fun. That's kind of like not that relevant. Yeah. Which relevant is that while you're in this rat race trying to just do your part, you're really not you. One is depressed and sad and insecure. And so that is what we have to talk about because we have to come up with a solution. So you'll be help. You're going to help me figure this out. We're going to take a break. We'll come back. And then we're going to dive into the ramifications of our new era of social media. All right. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the second half of plastic surgery uncensored. And boy, do we, I'm just loving this show because I got my niece in the hot seat. My Vandy, my Vandy freshman, and I'm going to grill the shit out of you because you are, you are really at that buffer line between really deeply and rooted in social media, but super aware. So there's mm -hmm. deeply and rooted and unaware. And then there's, I'm not participating in this bullshit. Both those are not helpful. What's helpful is you because you're in it and you know, it's bullshit. Yeah. And so we got to sort this out. All right. So the reason why we keep, we, the adults, ha ha ha, which by the way, have the same issues that the teens do, are all up in arms about this is because the young adults and adults are now manifesting the ramifications of the social media fallout. Yeah. How many of your friends are anxious, have, <laughs> are on anxiety medication? Too many. No, like 5%, 20%, half? Mm. 
at least 25%. Okay. So 25% of 18 year olds today, and this is just empiric, meaning based on your guessing, have severe anxiety requiring medication. Including me. <laughs> right. And so do you think, honestly, anxiety is not a new concept. Your mom has anxiety because of her own conditions. But mm -hmm. do you think that prior to social media, this many teens would have this much anxiety? No. No. It's impossible. And there are no. hundreds of studies that demonstrate that as a result of FOMO and comparison, and I want to be popular and people like me, you are anxious. Oh, 100%. No doubt. Then, then that anxiety is mixed with depression. We oh, use yeah. the word so loosely, but what the hell, what is the meaning of depression? What does that mean to you as a young adult? What does that word mean? Because we just say, oh, she's depressed. What, the, what does that mean? No. To me, that means you're just very unhappy with your life. You're just not enjoying your life. You're not enjoying anything you do. Stuff that you're supposed to be happy with, you just aren't. You just Correct. are constantly in a state of unhappiness. Okay. Right. So this is the key to the word depression. The word depression means that you have anhedonia. Anhedonia, which I like the word because it makes me feel sound I don't know, smart <laughs> or something. Anhedonia means the inability to have joy when joy should be present. Yeah. So you said it exactly right. You're at a party. I mean, shit, you're the center of the attention. You're attractive. You're smart. You have a boyfriend and you're not happy. So that means you're depressed because you should be happy. Mm hmm. What percentage of your friends in high school <coughs> genuinely put on a happy face, but were really kind of anxious and depressed when you guys were in private? What percentage? At least half. At right. least. And that's minimizing. So do you think that was a common trait? By the way, depression is not a new concept. It's been around mm -hmm. for forever. But do you think people are, the young adults are feeling more depression than they did before social media? No question. No question. Okay. So anxiety and depression then lead to what? Eating disorders. So what, per what percentage of your friends, past and present, have legit, I'm not talking about watch their what they're eating, legit eating disorders, legit anorexia, eating. bulimia, binge eating, what percentage? At least 25%. So that's, you do understand that that's an astronomical number. It's, it's it, every corner I turn, there are someone with an eating disorder. I can name 10 of my friends right now that have had eating disorders. So or when you say disorder, eating disorders, give me examples of what they do when you guys are out at a party. Um, my friends will not eat the entire day before a party because they don't want to look fat in their outfits. Okay, and then so they'll slow down. So, so slow down. So a young adult, 17, 18, mm -hmm. will go malnutrition all day. Mind you, you're at college. You're trying to educate yourself. You're trying to learn. We all know that without food, your brain doesn't work. Yeah. And you have an event in the evening and you want to wear something nice and look good. And you obviously want to post it. So you will, you meaning they, will not eat all day. Starve themselves, yeah. So that's that's crazy. That's psychotic. <coughs> what other examples of eating disorders do you see? Um, my A lot of my friends that, you know, will starve themselves the entire day. Or like, for example, like I will go to lunch with them and like I'll, you know, be feasting on my pasta and my chicken and my salad, whatever. And they'll be like, oh, I'm not hungry. I ate a bar. Like they've trained their body not to be hungry. But then late at night, after we've come back from whatever social event that they were trying to look skinny for, binge eating comes yeah, into binge play. Eating. Like these people will stuff themselves. Well, they haven't they, eaten in 20 hours. And they think that it's a sense of, oh, I haven't eaten for 20 hours. So it's okay that I'm eating all of this junk now. You know, it's right. like they think it's fine. Okay. So then here's another level to this shit. Here's another level. So the drive is to be skinny mm -hmm. or curvy, curvy, skinny, whatever the hell that means. Means your waist is small, but your ass is large. Yeah. What percentage of your friends, this is really important, doctor, filter, photo tune, Photoshop their images? 
I feel like I can honestly say all of them. 100%. I promise you. Like, if it, I, can't, I can't think in my brain and be like, oh, she wouldn't do that. Every single person will so, edit it. So then, so then what the hell? Yeah. So just think about this. Just stop, Just add it up. You don't eat all day, so you look skinny. And then you photo tune your Photoshop your picture anyways. Why not just Photoshop your picture and eat normal? Because they want to look skinny in person. It, it, it's just... So then, so then, the crazy part is, the girl sitting at home who wasn't invited to that party, who's having FOMO and is comparing herself, is comparing herself not only to the party she missed, where to everybody's unhappy. Photoshop. Where, where yeah. everybody is unhappy. She's comparing herself to the non-existent person who's out there. Yeah. So we are living our lives on a level of AI. We're not even real. We're not comparing ourselves to real people, which we shouldn't have done. We're comparing ourselves to the Photoshop version of the real people that we wish we were. Yeah. Like your brain should be exploding. It's so it's, honestly, the one thing I have to say is that like, even as much as I talk this out, it's so prominent in my life that it just seems normal at this point. No, like, I, I and just, it's obvious. And it's obvious to me because you're a well-adjusted person mm -hmm. and you know, your parents and us and all that, if we saw you like, your grades were dropping off. You were looking very unhealthy because you're binge eating. Um, you started dabbling in drugs. Um, you were doing crazy things. We, there would be a, a massive intervention, mm -hmm. right? People would come to your, but so you're, in a, you're a well-adjusted drug addict. Uh, you, you're, you're a functioning alcoholic. Mm -hmm. you, you know it's wrong. You know it's eroding. You know that it's melting your brain away. Mm -hmm but you seem to be able to manage it and navigate. And the hopes is that you'll get old enough like your sister and it'll be like, I'm out of this stage. I don't give a shit. We yeah. hope, maybe it won't. Maybe you will be, maybe this will be a permanent part of your life. We don't know, but right now it's not at a crisis level per se, because you're still doing well in school and don't seem to be crazy and haven't done anything nuts yet. Yeah. But you do know that for a lot of people, they don't have the fortitude, background, resilience that maybe you do. And as yeah. a result, they are now getting hypersexual. Oh. Mm -hmm. So what percentage of your friends are hypersexual, hook up with guys, post inappropriate photos, maybe even have OnlyFans, and they're like 18, 17? Like Everyone. Everyone posts inappropriate stuff that they shouldn't be posting at this age. Everyone. So where did that come from? Where do you think? Well, I mean, you don't, you know, like, you don't remember your sister walking around in a near naked posting photos six years, seven years ago, do you? So what is what is up with that? Where does that come from? People want attention, and people enjoy attention, and people get attention from posting these hypersexual things. For example, I'll be scrolling through TikTok, and you know, whatever, there'll be like these videos that have a few thousand likes, like blah, blah, blah. And then I'll scroll on a picture on a video of like a girl in a thong bikini, like at the beach, two million likes. Like these people are getting so much attention, good or bad, they're just getting a lot of attention from hypersexuals, hypersexualizing right. themselves. Right, so the question is, those two million likes, have you ever, open them up to look at those 2 million likes. They are men. Old, gross men. Old, gross men. One in people in Bangladesh, those in the middle of the Middle East, those in the far corners of the world, gross old men, disgusting, feasting their imagination on young, attractive girls. And it's not like they're getting attention because they just, they just had a, oh my God, look at this girl playing the violin. Yeah. Holy shit. She's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. 4,000 likes. Holy shit, look at this piece of ass. 2.5 million likes. So you're just a whore. But the thing is, one else, one thing that makes a difference is that it's not only these disgusting old men that you can see in the comments like, oh, beautiful, like whatever. It's a bunch of people my age. Like the first comment you will see on one of these videos is, even though it's a joke, I'm going to sleep on the highway tonight. Or why did my parents like make the wrong child? Or like, 
how the hell do I get myself to look like this? I'm going to kill myself. Like people will see this and be like, what am I doing wrong? Why don't I look like this person? Right. But, but they, but all of them are savvy. So they know that this person doesn't look like, wait, hold on. If I'm an old guy and I'm out of touch with reality and I don't know Facetune and Photoshop and bullshit, I didn't even know that you could shrink videos. You can shrink your waist in a video. Like I thought it was only photos. So if you're a girl, you're 19, you see an image of a super hot girl and you think to myself, oh my God, this girl doesn't even have one fucking cellulite. You know it's not her. You do the same thing. Why would you even be bothered? Because... <coughs> because at the end of the day, you just are. Like no, no, no. No, you can't say that. That's bullshit. You know it's a fake image. But sometimes it isn't fake. No, it's always fake. I'm the plastic surgeon. Hello, Earth to Tiana. No, no woman walks around with a perfect ass. There are eight of them in the world. All other women who have a great ass, look wonderful, pretty hot, work out, everything, look like humans. Humans have wrinkles. Humans have stretch marks. Humans have moles. Humans have normal things. These are Photoshop images in very precarious positions that augment reality. You know, and I know. But somehow you guys, you guys, meaning the people who are, oh, wow. Damn, she looks amazing. And you're right. Actually, you're correct. Out of the 2.5 million, 500,000 are women going, girl, you look great. Good job. And it's like you guys are feeding into each other. But no yeah. one looks like that. Now, further down the road, you have people now going and getting surgery. So how many of your friends, how old are you? You're 18. So you did your nose. You did your nose, mm -hmm. unarguable. You had an ethnic large nose, da, 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 da. How many of your friends are doing surgeries to look like these Instagram hoochies? Like, give me examples of what they've done. Okay. Let's just start off by saying that I have never seen such a significant amount of people my age ever get lip filler this much. Like, people have gone berserk. You walk around and people are like, like, they, it doesn't right. even look good anymore. People are just crazy. They're like feeding in Botox. Huge. People my so age. These, by the way, these are all 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds. Yes, yes. We're not talking Botox. about 26-year-olds, 30-year-olds, 34-year-olds. Okay, so it's like why don't so why are we stopping at why are we stopping at fifteen? Why don't we do Botox and filler in a twelve year old? Yeah. Why not boob jobs? I know people have gotten boob jobs. Boob jobs at 17, 16. Okay, what about all the what about um, this lip lift shit where people are operating on their lower lip to pull it up and look like a duck? Mm -hmm. So. That's the next level, right? You see how it's starting to snowball? So we do all this shit on social media. The ramifications is anxiety and depression leads to insecurity. Those then lead to eating disorders. Then they lead to surgeries, which are permanent. And then what's the end of the rope? What's the final stage of this? People are never satisfied. You can no. do everything in the world. The and they end still of the rope is suicide. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many thousands of young adults kill themselves every year? I know two people in my grade who have killed themselves. Two people in your grade have killed themselves. And why did they kill themselves? Why do you kill yourself? Why do you take yourself away from this earth? What is the reason? You know, when you, th when I'm thinking about it and I'm thinking back to this happened my sophomore year of high school. And we found out that this kid killed himself. He felt like he had no friends. He felt like he wasn't included. He was just depressed. And one thing that is crazy, he didn't have social media. He wasn't present on social media at all. He didn't use it. And yet he still is just, it's crazy. It's like. So, but what that tells you, but all that tells you, that's like saying, all that saying is like, I have this guy, he died of lung cancer. He never smoked. So oh therefore, smoke. no, all that tells you is that when you get depressed enough, when you get depressed enough, you will kill yourself. Now, now, whether you get depressed as a result of 
being on social media or because you have no friends, more people are depressed than they ever were before. So yeah. now you have hundreds and thousands of depressed adolescents who have greater potential of suicide. Yeah. So all that being said, so here we are. Here you are, you are in the middle, right? You're neither left, you're neither right. What's the solution? And don't give me some cheeky ass answer. Here you are, you're telling me, I'm telling you, Tiana, do you realize this is bullshit? Yes. Do you think this is, are you happy doing this stuff? No. Why do you do it? Because I have to. Can you stop? No. What is the solution? Listen to yourself. What is the solution for other parents and other young adults going, fuck, I'm in this kind of like web. Yeah. So how do you, what's the solution? I, there is nothing I can say that will be an immediate solution. Any solution. The, it doesn't have to be immediate. It doesn't have to be grand. What do you suggest? The, this is going to sound ridiculous. The only solution I can think of to make me stop using social media in a toxic way is if everyone stopped using social media. So because I, I can't stop unless everyone stops. It's, it's so, but, sad. But you, know, but, but you know that that's phenomenal. You're going to be left out. You're not going to be completely included without this aspect. So well, why not use it in a different fashion? Why does it have to be all or none? Why does because it, people listen, won't change. No, 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 no. That's not true. There are people you, it's, it's, it, it, it's what you're describing is the phenomenon of all or none or black and white. What I'm suggesting is I'm not suggesting that social media is toxic and should be eliminated from the planet. I'm on social media. My wife is on social media. I use it for work. We connect with friends. We see family. We post pictures of our son. Mm -hmm. There are many useful useful aspects of social media. What I'm suggesting is not for you to delete your social media. <coughs> I'm suggesting every time you post, you be conscious of why you're posting, who you're posting for, what happens if it's not liked, what image you're portraying, be conscious of that aspect. I'm not saying don't share a fun time with your friends. Be a little bit more aware so that you slow down this wheel. I didn't ask you to stop it. I just said, let's change the course of it. Yeah. The truth is that if everyone always said, I can't do it if everyone doesn't do it, then no one changes anything because nothing is all or none. They're not yeah. going to stop murdering people in Iran unless a hundred, you know, a thousand women go into the street. Those are the courageous people. Yeah. Then a whole bunch of people follow and it's 200,000. So I consider you as a mover and a shaker. I think you're one of those individuals who can be valedictorian, cool as can be, but then don't go to a party and snort cocaine. Yeah. Because, well, why aren't you snorting cocaine? It's popular. It's at parties. What, what, what you're just shaking That's your iconic. head. <laughs> Well, why does that psychotic and doing social media to the point that it makes you unhappy not? So you understand the analogies. You've drawn yeah. the line. I'm telling you that you can draw the line a little bit closer. I mean, at the end of the day, I'd like to say that I'm a very, like, I'm one of the more reasonable people on social media. Like, as much as I fall into these toxic habits, like, the other week I was tired, I just stayed in because I didn't feel like going out. Like, I post, I post not that often on my Instagram. And when I do, it's because I like a picture and I kind of just want to. Obviously, if I want these happens, I'm like, oh my God, this is sick. Like, I want people to see this. Like, I'm going to post this or like, whatever. I don't edit my photos and stuff like that. But it's really challenging because as much as I think I have a very healthy, not very healthy, but a healthier relationship with social media than most do, when you're surrounded by this 24-7, it's like, it's hard. It's just hard. I can't oh. explain specific details. I can't just, it's just hard. I, I had a girl on my soccer team. Like she played, she played the same position as me. I knew her for a really long time. And slowly, every time she'd come to practice, she'd be thinner and thinner and thinner and to the point I could see her bones, like crazy eating disorder, very present on social media. Like, and it's just like, or like when I told you, when I go to lunch and I'm trying to enjoy my meals and I'm like, I'm like, whatever, I love food. And like, it makes me feel shit about myself when like my friend over here is eating a grain of rice and calling it a day. You know, it's just like, 
So what it's I, very so to, so, hard so being sad about I didn't say it is. It isn't hard. But if you if you want to not drink, you don't go to bars. You have to change the pattern of the individuals that you surround yourself with. It's just that simple. And so but what? But you can't tell me it's everybody because your it's sister. It's not is everybody, but in a sense, when I live in a place like Los Angeles, for example, like everyone from my school, like from my high school, or like so many of the people I surrounded myself with were just psychotic in the sense of the way that they had a relationship with social media or the way that they ate. And I can't just stop being friends. No, with I didn't, I didn't, I'm not even, by the way, I'm not asking you to do anything major. I'm simply mm-hmm. saying to move the needle. We have to move the needle. And the way to do it is to slowly and gradually, very and slowly and gradually shift the direction of this ship. But what you're stating, and I want people to hear, is firsthand, I mean, it doesn't get any more raw than this. It's firsthand admission by a young adult who's well-adjusted but trapped in the world and the web of social media and this idea that I'm in prison, but there's no walls. I could leave anytime I want, but somehow I can't. And so if you are this way and you're super well adjusted, imagine, just imagine the impact it's having on the overwhelming majority of young adults who aren't well adjusted, who aren't. Absolutely. That's what I see in my everyday life. Okay. I so that's like why we're having this conversation. With my we're age ha- group, I feel like honestly, it's most prominent because like, like you said, we're at a time in our lives where like, we are old enough that like, we know that this is psychotic, but like we're still very present in it. So these people are just like in this complete brainwash, like this is what we have to do, but we know we don't have to do it. And it's just like, at the end of the day, nobody's really changing because like, this is just how our age group is. And this is just right. like how you go on. Right. And so so it's like, that's why we have, that's why we have the podcast. That's why we have these open dialogues. That's why we have these discussions. That's why parents are then going to go and be like, fuck, I didn't realize my kids are under this. And they're going to, you know, hopefully go and have conversations. And what you hope is that individually, every teen has someone in their life that can say, hey, just curiosity. Are you depressed? Are you anxious? Are you feeling left out? Do you feel a certain degree of pressure? Do you feel like you need to be skinnier? Are you becoming slowly hypersexual? And you have the dialogue. And at the very least, it's op- out there in the open. So I thought it's very fascinating. Yeah. People deny it. And that's another thing I've noticed is that, like, for example, me and my best friend, we talked to one of our friends who we could very apparently see was developing an eating disorder. Like, she would not eat. She was unhealthy. And we care enough about her that we went up to her like listen like we can see that you're changing your eating habits we can see that you're not treating your body the way you should what can we do to help you like are you okay and she's like I'm fine like I'm I'm like perfectly fine I'm just not that hungry like people really yeah yeah well I mean they're ashamed it's it's these are disorders and they're ashamed and so the very least at the very least we have to have a conversation and this conversation has to continue and it has to be me to you, me to parents, parents to their kids, kids to their teachers, teachers. To, we just have to have this dialogue constantly so we don't just stick our head in the sand because this is a major goddamn problem. Yeah. And plastic surgeons are at the forefront because we are participating in the alterations of people, sometimes in a way that is not healthy. Yeah. At any rate, we're going to wrap it up because I think we have hit some seriously – um, I don't know. I just think it really important topics. I commend you for at least wanting to get on the show and talk to me. You <laughs> didn't even hesitate. Yeah. Uh, and most importantly, for just being transparent and recognizing where you are in your life. And I wish you great success. And I hope that you continue to recognize truth from fiction. Yeah. That's really okay. I mean, All right, guys. Yep. You were going to say one more thing. <laughs> totally interrupting you but honestly just anyone my age having conversations like this whenever you can it's just really eye-opening to realize that just like stuff is crazy and do stuff because you want to not yeah well listen i'm just stating what you know but from a from a mirror and when you see it in here you're like yeah i guess you're right yeah huh okay let me think about this (laughs) all right guys it was a pleasure that wraps up another episode of plastic surgery uncensored as always i'm your host dr roddy raban Please, please, if you like the show, you find it interesting, you find it fascinating, whatever, 
do me a favor. Number one, subscribe to the show, download. That's how we get credit for you being here so that we continue this process. Two, share it with people you love. You never know who's going to do some plastic surgery and may wish they had this information. And lastly, go write something nice. Do something nice. Go write something nice about our podcast. Make us all feel good. You know, positive comments are always appreciated. At any rate, signing off until next week. I'm your host, Dr. Roddy Irvine. Bye-bye. Bye.